shouldn't be surprised. This is how you've been from the beginning. You can't help but save those who need rescuing, even if they aren't asking you for any help. That's right, young Midoriya. That's the kind of hero you've always been. And here we are, finally at the end of the series. I was crazy to even attempt. I have talked a lot about why I love this show, from the writing to the production values and how they combine together. But as impressive as these aspects of the show might be, a lot of my passion for Boku no Hero comes from more personal reasons and today's topic is one of these. Today, I want to focus in on what might be my favorite part of the entire show, and that is the quirks all for one, one for all, and what they represent. This might seem strange to say, but the power and meaning of Wong For All is something that the whole show is built around. As you know, Wong For All is the quirk that has been passed down through generations and then passed from All Might to Deku. But more than that is how the quirk represents what a hero is and what they should aspire to be. All Might is the world's greatest hero. Deku will become the world's greatest hero in the future, and more than anyone else, these are the characters the viewer is made to admire. And the name of the quirk itself embodies the mindset that makes them heroes. They are those who are willing to give of themselves to help humanity. This is in contrast to All For One, who is one of the villains of the show as we get further along. It is quite obvious that All For One is meant to be a foil to All Might through their opposite quirks, one being a hero and one being a villain, and even the names of the quirks being opposite. But it is here that we see the not so subtle difference between a hero and villain. One for All represents using one's quirk for the betterment of humanity, while All for One represents using one's quirk to take from humanity for selfish reasons. Looking at the real world, the same truth holds, though it is less black and white. In my last video, I talked about how we have real life quirks, unique things about us which we can use to be heroes, and the show raises the question of what the viewer is going to do with their own quirks they have been given in life. And those who answer the question with making the world a better place are the heroes in the world, while those who answer with using the quirks they've been given to just make their own lives better are the villains in the world. It's easy to think about what we will do with our own quirks to improve our own lives, how we will get a good job, make a good living, and create the life that we want. And while these things are not bad, there is a danger here of becoming so self-absorbed in our own success in life that we forget what it means to be a hero that it means to use our quirks to make the world a better place. If I only used the abilities I had been given for myself, then that would be a betrayal of those who gave me these abilities, and I would be nothing more than all for one, who uses everything he has been given to take from those around him and to feel his own power. Instead, I want to be like those who have one for all, who take what they have and make the world a better place, and then pass on that power to the next person. And I love the idea of a quirk being passed from one hero to the next. It is a representation of how life works. These quirks we have can also be passed on with the way we can impact our ideals and skills upon others. I can think of those in my family who have since passed away, but they have had an impact through the ideals that they instilled in their family. My uncle was someone who embodied the idea of serving others above anything else, and my grandma was someone who loved family above everything else. And they passed on these ideals to me. And then I think about the other heroes in my life who, while very much still alive, are growing older, losing the strength that they had when they were younger. And this is like how Deku sees All Might, still powerful, but growing weaker, and it really is a terrifying feeling. There is also the field of scientific discovery. With one for all, each time the quirk is passed, it becomes more powerful, starting off with someone who is weak and is now empowering All Might and Deku. And with science, it is the same thing. Most discoveries are small. They are able to take all that has been done before them and then just add another small step. Looking back, it is amazing how far science has gone, but this was done just one small step at a time. The legacy of a generation really is its knowledge of how the world works, with the next generation then expanding on that. And this is just how the generation of Wong For All made the power stronger so it could better fight the evil in the world. Really, the story of My Hero Academia is the story of the mantle of world's greatest hero being passed from All Might to Deku in this idea. 
how Deku will one day grow to surpass All Might is one of the things that I just love seeing about the show. Deku is a character the show got me to love from the very start, and so every step he takes toward the school is one that just fills me with so much joy. And no scene does this better than my favorite battle in all of anime. And that is Deku and Bakugo versus All Might. I know a lot of people would prefer the Deku versus Todoroki battle, and while that battle is awesome, it just does not compete to the battle against All Might. The more I rewatch that fight, the more I love everything the battle is and everything it represents. All throughout season two, we saw Deku finding his place as a hero, standing out during the sports festival and learning to control Wung for all and then fighting Stain. But the battle against All Might is his first opportunity to directly challenge All Might and have the chance to surpass him as the symbol of peace. And I just love this part so much. I'm getting chills just talking about it. To do this analysis, I had to go watch the episode again. And as I was writing the script, I just got excited at that opportunity. I love this show so much. Anyway, the battle starts off with All Might's overwhelming power, which shows just how far Deku has to come to become the world's greatest hero. He is terrified of facing All Might, knows he doesn't stand a chance, again, showing how he doesn't feel he can become the world's great hero. But then, with Bakugo's help, Deku is actually able to get a good attack, and showing that just maybe this dream of becoming a great hero is within reach but it is not something he can do alone. One of the things I love about shonen anime is the ideals of friendship and how we make each other stronger, and this is on full display here, with how Deku and Bakugo are able to work together. Deku is not strong enough on his own, but together they can do something greater than either one on their own could do. And then, the final blow of the battle, where Deku ran to save Bakugo, delivering a smash to All Might, this is a reminder of the hero that Deku always was. He would always run to save a friend and to protect the weak no matter what he was up against. Whether it be a nameless kid being picked on, Bakugo from the slime monster, or even Todoroki from himself, Deku is the type of hero who will never leave someone behind, no matter how crazy and illogical it might be. This blow shows that not even the wall that is Deku's great hero is enough to stop him. But the thing that changed between the start of the series and now is now old Deku actually has the power to be the hero he always dreamed of. He truly is the legacy of All Might, both through his quirk and also his heroic mindset. And what I really love about the episode and how it ties into the legacy is how All Might is an inspiration to both Deku and Bakugo and how they are learning from him. All Might even comments at how they learn from their earlier combat practice to fight him together. But the legacy of All Might isn't just Deku, but it's through all those he inspires who are able to do far more than All Might can do on his own, despite how weak each individual person might be at first. Deku, Bakugo, Todoroki, the rest of the class, even the entire world watched All Might, learned how to be a hero from him, and were able to go and make a difference in the world. Back when I first started this series of videos, I said that the first reason I loved My Hero Academia is because it's a shonen. And the idea of leaving a legacy is something that is woven through these stories. From all the characters that inspire Naruto, and then that he later inspired, or the way that Shiro was so inspired to be a hero from Kiritsugu in Fate, or how Simone was inspired by Kamina in Garen Lagann, or even how Kuro Sensei inspired the class of outcasts in Assassination Classroom. These ideas are things that fill anime, but more than that, the legacy that these heroes of fiction have is on the hearts of those who view the stories. Anime has inspired many to live their lives better, to become like the heroes they see in these shows. There is a thread on Crunchyroll's forums a while back where hundreds of people shared how Naruto had impacted their life. There are many who shared how Naruto helped them with depression, helped them to find friendship, or even to follow their dreams. Other shows like Full Metal Alchemist have inspired others to want to live their life as a sacrifice to others. And Goku has inspired those I know to push beyond their limits and become the best person that they can be. And now, a new generation of anime fans is being inspired by My Hero Academia, just how others were with the big anime of the 90s and 2000s. There is even a story on Reddit a while back of a person who was saved from depression and suicide because of My Hero Academia. And the story of Deku and All Might have even inspired me to make a difference in the world as well. But it is not just how these shows impact the viewer that they are able to leave a legacy. 
The creators of these stories are always being inspired by those who came before him, and then they inspire the next generation. There is a piece of fan art that I absolutely love, where we see Naruto telling Deku that it is now up to him. And then we see Naruto and Luffy reflecting on how Deku is going to be big one day. Then we see a picture of Goku with Naruto, Luffy, and Ichigo. This shows how Dragon Ball inspired the big three of the 2000s, which then inspired My Hero Academia. And this isn't just it from a cool piece of fan art either, but Hirokoshi, the manga of My Hero Academia, once submitted fan art for One Piece, and when Boku no Hero's anime was about to debut, Kishimoto, the manga of Naruto, drew a picture of Naruto cheering Deku on in Shonen Jump. The reason that Horikoshi is here is because of the stories of heroes who came before him, both in Japan and across the world. We know for sure that he is fans of One Piece, Spider-Man, and Star Wars, and I'm sure many others. And this is just like what Deku says at the start of Season 2, Episode 1. How the reason he is here is because of the heroes that came before him. When we see All Might's autograph in Episode 1, there are sunglasses in it, just like those that were worn by one of the most inspirational heroes of the 2000s. And when All Might talks about one for all being passed down generations, it's not unlike a similar line spoken by the same voice actor not that many years ago. These examples may be overthinking a bit, but whether direct inspiration or not, the generations of artists and storytellers are always inspiring the next. My Hero Academia is a story about leaving a legacy. All Might and the other professional heroes are leaving a legacy in the students of UA. The heroic acts of these characters are leaving a legacy in the hearts of the viewers, telling them that they too can become heroes. And just as Horikoshi took inspiration from the stories that came before them, he too is inspiring artists and storytellers across the world, and I cannot wait to see what they create. My Hero Academia is my favorite anime today, but I wonder how that will change in 5 or 10 years. What show will be created to surpass My Hero Academia, inspired by it? and others like it. And well, I'm excited to find out. So that is reason number 12 of why I love My Hero Academia. I love this show just for so many reasons, more so than I can count. But these were just the 12 that I felt were best to make a video on. Though don't think I'm done with this show. It's still ongoing after all, and the new season is just about to start. But for now, I hope you've enjoyed this series and understand a little bit more about why I like it so much. Again, you may not like it as much as I do. That is very okay. But anyway, I will see you next time with another video about... I'll figure that one out later. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time.